This looks like an appropriate place to start exploring St. Augustine, Florida. How do I look? Do I look like I'm an exploring type today? We've got a mosaic here and come into this visitor center, it's upside down. Maratengas River. Is that how you pronounce that? Okay, looks like the basic layout of the city. Let's go in the visitor center and we'll see what they got for us. It's nice and cool in here. I like it. I can just come here and spend the afternoon. Take a siesta on one of these benches. I'll read all that later. Oh, it's this sword here just talking about. Over 380 years after it slipped beneath the surface of the water, a storm in the Straits of Florida, a sword franked from the famed Spanish galleon Atoche as a new home. Oh, look, wow. 380 years underwater. I bet they had to scrape the barnacles off that. <laughs> now I'm recording. I did a whole bunch of recording a while ago and it wasn't recording. <laughs> okay. My dad owned one of those measuring sticks folds out to measure stuff stone projectile point it's translated into English that means arrowhead you know I say to take the politically correct and translate it to the common vernacular heads. The first American trilogy. These three people represent the diversity of America's first colony. Portrayed are Don Mendez de Avias, founder of St. Augustine, Chief Siloy, the leader of the Tucumcan little Indians at the village of Siloy, and Juanita Diego de Amaye a conceptual character of the African slave who was present in the colony from the 17th century onwards. Here we have a replica of an old ship. Do pause the video at any time to read what I'm showing you. I pause videos often to look at detail. Spanish Caravel. It's like a fast little ship. Setbacks and misfortune. They do happen in life. What is this? It's a head of something. A donkey skull. Date from the 17th century. Cannonballs. Bannets. 
lead musket balls, trigger guard. Eight pounder, four pounder, okay, and grape shot. So, man, you get hit with one of those, your leg, arm is gone, or your head. Oh, that's a beautiful ship. And look at those guns. Boom, 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 boom. Watched some of Pirates of the Caribbean the other night with Blake. Imagine those guns firing. The United States acquires Florida, 1821. Looks like a spur over there. Pieces of pottery. A French cooking pot fragment. Game disc, I guess like playing dice or something. What I don't know will fill Wikipedia and Google both. A wood drill. So before there was Bakita and Black and Decker, I guess that's how you drill wood. Copper kettle has seen its better days. Wine bottle. Interesting. Fire and stone, 1702 to 1763. In 72, 1702, English forces at attacked St. Augustine but were unable to capture the Castillo de San Marcos where the town's residents sought refuge. I guess I'm gonna kick them Lammies butts. Sorry, Lammies. I've got a ticket to ride. I've got a ticket to ride the trolley around a whole bunch of stops. Hop on, hop off at your leisure. Just sitting here waiting on the trolley. They said every 15 minutes. Should I time them? One just left, it was full. It was behind there. We're on the trolley and rolling. And it was causing us to be a loud. So the Spaniards here in town decided to hire Catholic Catholics, what would have been very outside of our city gates, on what was considered at some point to be non Catholic and non sacred grounds. The Huguenot Cemetery only has 97 headstones, but now on more than 900 bodies buried there. In 1821, there was a terrible outbreak of the yellow fever, which killed nearly a third of the local population. They decided they would bury their bodies 13 to 25 to one grave. We don't know who all those bodies are because only I'm the last body I'm not even going to try to talk louder than she is. Got their name carved on a headstone. Otherwise, we know nothing about them at all. Our stop number three coming up momentarily on the left hand side is our Potter's Wax Museum and the Old Drug Store. That old drug store was originally set up by a gentleman, Mr. Spiciger. Spiciger came to Florida to be an orange grove owner. It did not work out very well for him, so he went back to being a druggist. A druggist is a bit like a pharmacist, except they have very little training and a whole lot of access to opiates. You'd go to Mr. Spicer with whatever your ailment happened to be. Maybe you had a cough, <laughs> a headache, ooh, a bellyache, ah. He'd mix you up his signature mixture of spring water, grain alcohol, and oh, oh, opium. One swing of that didn't matter what your ailments were, you felt good even if your ailments are still there. For stop number three, if you'd like to exit, Potter's Wax Museum has over 160 different wax figurines. Exit 
carefully backwards using our handrail should be kept to a minimum of voice for a few months. That way everybody gets to enjoy the tour. Please do not enter or exit the trolley to the bells that rung. Up in front of us on the left hand side is the Kubo line. Made with palm trunks which would stack horizontally along the interior, vertically along the exterior, with hard packed sand, dirt, gravel along the interior of those two layers. The Kubo line itself would have had only one way in or out. The city gates coming up on our left hand side. They were open and gone, closed at dusk. If you were not in a dusk, you were not in until dawn. Led down fast with the skaters, the skaters, and all them nasty groups. Our city gates were going to be torn down in 1908, but the daughters of the American Revolution said not on my watch. The city we gates. Outside of our city gates, serving tea and cookies to anybody who would listen, saving our city gates from being torn down. Some history here. This goes back a ways to 1739. Is the gate to the city. The only way into the city through the fortified walls. This is the other side. Treasure Museum. Arr! They have over 800 different amazing pirate artifacts. One of the last of three Jolly Rogers, as well as the very last authentic pirate treasure chest. At Stomper 5, you'll find the colonial experience as well. It's a living history museum. With a real life blacksmith shop, cannon firings, musket firings, as well as a recreation of Santa Maria, Mr. Christopher Columbus's ship that he sailed the ocean blue on. If you'd like to exit for Stomper 5, you can also choose to go across the street to the Castillo de San Marcos, since it is going to take us a little over an hour to get over there. What you can do is you can exit here at stop number 4, 5, or 6, go right across the street. When you are done to at stop number 17 to the Castillo de San Marcos, you can choose to pick up the trolley there, or come back over to stop number 4, 5, or 6 to reboard the trolley, as long as it's before 4.30. Out of Coquina, which is a very durable material. But the Castillo de San Marcos is not the first. The second, the third, actually, it is the tenth Castillo. The ninth was burned down by Robert Searles, who was a hired pirate. Arr! Somebody is going to call him a privateer, but a pirate! He's a pirate all the same. Yarr, mateys. No matter if they were hired by the king and queen of some country. On your left, though, the Castillo de San Marcos was not be out of Coquina until Queen Isabella said, maybe you should build it out of something a little bit less flammable. They quarried the Coquina directly from Anastasia Island up in front of us on the left. Stop number six coming up is our best western on the Bayfront. If you'd like to visit any of our amazing Bayfront restaurants, they have got Harry's and Berry's and Johnny's and Behan's, the Teeny Martini Bar. As we're heading down the next road, we're heading down one of the many streets in St. Augustine that is very narrow and very winding. The streets of St. Augustine were built, first built narrow and winding for two different reasons. Number one was as a defense strategy. Enemy soldiers marching down these streets had to be very cautious and very careful as they marched down here of ambushes around every twist and every turn. These days, the ambushes are vehicles going the opposite direction of traffic or ones that want to ignore the stop sign. So keep your eyes peeled. Now the other reason they created our streets so very narrow and winding was as a way to bring a breeze into the earliest Spanish homes. A little bit of air conditioning, if you will. The Spanish homes are built with a breeze in mind. About one story tall, they have flat roofs, open slatted windows, as well as a side courtyard with a side courtyard entrance. When the British came through, they would add a second story to those homes, glass the windows, as well as a door directly to the street. Now just past DJ's clear shop, there's going to be a big set of this man way toys and hobbies. On the left hand side and the right hand side, you'll see two great examples of the Spanish windows. The wooden spots would allow a breeze in, but it also kept out the larger predators, such as lions, the tigers, the bears. Oh my. 
It would not have kept out the local bird of prey, the mosquito. Stop number seven is High Paladin St. George Land Henry Flagler wanted. So he'd offered them tens and hundreds of thousands of dollars for their church and their land, and they still said no no matter how much money he offered them. Until finally he said, I will build you a brand new church. I will build it for you. I will give it to you. I will give you the land it is on, and in return, you will give me your land, and you will give me your church. They said, all right, okay. Because they got a brand new church. Henry Flagler got a small piece of land. Now, Henry Flagler donated money to the Catholic Church, and the Baptist approached him. They said, we've seen how you have been giving so much attention to our local churches. Will you build us a church? And he said, absolutely not. I will give you two years to raise $10,000, and if you could do that, I'll give you the land for free to build your church on. Eighteen months passed, and the ancient city Baptist church over on the right-hand side was under construction. The round portion you see on that structure, you may take a look at and think, ah, it's a bell tower. Well, there is no bell in that tower, because Mr. Henry Flagler has the same thought, that they would put a bell in that tower, and they would interrupt his lovely guests at his hotel stay, that they would be competing with his wonderful church bells right here up ahead on the right, and they would be interrupting his own rest in his home, which is just down the street. So Henry Flagler said you can have as many towers as you want, but no bells. Today that church was known as St. Augustine's only Nobel Prize. Because there's no bell. It's okay to look, guys. That joke's actually no better. Up ahead on the right is the Flagler Memorial Presbyterian Church. The Flagler Memorial Presbyterian was originally built in honor of Jenny Louise, Henry Flagler's beloved daughter. Jenny Louise had given birth to a little girl named Marjorie. Marjorie passed away a short time after she was born, so Henry Flagler had Jenny Louise sent for from New York down to St. Augustine, so that he and his as well as Jenny Louise with little baby Marjorie in her arms. The Flagler Memorial Presbyterian Church is only open on Fridays from 11 until 3.30. Of course, also on Sunday for services. Up ahead on the right hand side is the beautiful Flagler College. Once upon a time, the Ponce de Leon Hotel. Because Henry Flagler didn't come here because he wanted to build churches, he came here to build hotels. His first hotel was called the Ponce de Leon Hotel, and it was an incredibly luxurious hotel for its day. With all the amazing amenities you could ever dream of, such as hot and cold running water, steam, heat, and electricity about three years prior to the lighthouse having electricity. It was powered by several different generators. Of course, the generators have been updated through the years. They're not in the building today. The original ones are actually now in the Smithsonian, which is powered by Thomas Edison before the White House had electricity. I would like to mention it if you ever stop by in the D.C. area. Hope you're headed to the trolley stops over there and let them know that we're better than they are. Because we are. We also have better weather, just saying. Over to the right, as we're coming across the round portion of the building here, you may look at the round portion of the structure and think that the windows look very shiny and very warped, mostly because they are. But you're not looking at the windows themselves. You happen to be looking at bulletproof and hurricane-proof polycarbonate plexiglass. The polycarbonate plexiglass is there to protect the windows underneath which are Lewis Comfort Tiffany stained glass. And they happen to be insured to the tune of $131 million. Wow. I mean, I would put bulletproof plexiglass glass on them too. Just saying. The Ponce de Leon was an incredible hotel. It was also incredibly expensive. Because no matter how long you physically wanted to stay at the Ponce for, you had to pay for all three of the months that it was open. And they might would call these three months a season. Anywhere from Christmas time to Easter time, if you visited for two days or two weeks. You paid for all three of those months. And they flag were charged $9,000 for a hotel visit. Today, that would be the equivalent of $300,000 for a hotel. That's a lot of money. Henry Flagler was inspired to build his hotels out of poured concrete and brick by our Villa Zareda. Coming out of our next stop, the Villa Zareda here on the right-hand side was built by a gentleman 
years old in the early parts of June. Miss Colin Tyson was a great friend in our local community to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. They were such good friends that she has a signed family Bible by him. And when Connor's Wax Museum was making the wax figurine of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., they asked for her approval. She said no, because it wasn't quite right, right. When they did get it just right, they say she hugged the figurine and she cried. Everybody say, oh. Everybody say, everybody say, oh, you guys are so tired, I guess. The cross street on your left and right hand side is called Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Avenue. One of only two streets in the whole world. named after Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. But he also marched on. Where on one is more than a thousand. This thing's bumpy. I wonder how stabilization is going to work. He's also been named on. But the other one is from Georgia. Pretty cool. On the left-hand side, you'll see a blue building. That is the Yalaha Plantation House. Yalaha is seven miles away from the Yalaha Plantation. Yalaha is the Yalaha Plantation. Guess what they were growing over there? Oranges. How do you know? Really good. The dark blue structure coming up on the right is the Dr. Weedham House. His winter residence here in St. Augustine is said to be quite haunted. <laughs> yes. That's because Dr. Weed believed in human experimentation. I suppose, depending on your definition, he kind of did, because Osceola passed away under Dr. Wheaton's care. So Dr. Wheaton cut off Osceola's head, and he placed it into a jar that we might place it on his children's bedside table when they were naughty. On the plus side, they say he had very well-behaved children. Wow. This goes back before my time of working on time clocks. See who made these cards. What all did you say is in here? So we got some lime juice in there, a little sugar cane, ginger juice, not ginger beer, also a little cinnamon and cayenne to liven it up a little bit for you. Let's see how this works. <laughs> awesome. Is it good? I like it. I'm not a big vodka guy, so that's saying a lot for me. Oh yeah, that ginger. Yeah, it's 
Yep, that snaps it up. Yeah, all, all <laughs> mules are usually going to be very ginger forward on there. A Florida mule. Mm -hmm. So all the bars around town know how to make this. Yes, they do, but they will. Uh, they won't have our mix. So there's a lot of bars will craft a Moscow mule. Mm -hmm. How they do it uh, different ways. So every bar will pretty much do it differently. Whether it's they add some mint or this and that, but usually that common theme is going to be that ginger in there. I could, I could like about six ounces of that. <laughs> Sir, I could drink a whole glass of that. And it looks like the self-guided tour continues. Oh, that was good. Wow, that's cool. That was really good. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh my goodness, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. <sighs> wow. There's a lot here. Oh, look at that barrel. That's huge. Okay, you guys can read this on your own. Oh man, I wish they were brewing today or bashing or what do you call it, distilling today. That would have been good. Sixty gallon botanical gin still. Wow. Five hundred gallon spirit still. Seven hundred and fifty gallon mash cooker. Seven hundred and fifty gallon fermentation tanks. It's quite a setup here. And bottled with pride. I don't think it's that pervert kind. air conditioning in here. <laughs> nice. Look at all the awards. Keep what are you serving here? We're having a gin and tonic and a rum tiki. So where are you visiting from? Rapid City, South Dakota. Well, welcome. I hope you have some fun while you're in town. I am. We'll start you off with our gin. Now it's bottled 94 proof. It's a botanical gin, so it's not going to be like a London gin, a strong pine taste. Uh -huh. Our distillers put 12 botanicals, three are Florida citrus, only one of the 12, <coughs> 12 is juniper. All 12 is on the back side bar. Yeah, I can always... We won 39 Spirit Awards with our gin. Two of those were for Best Craft Gin in the United States, two years in a row by USA Today. Mixing it with our essential tonic mix, all natural quinine made from cinchona bark, a little water, sugar, lime juice, and cinnamon. One part spirit, one part mix, two parts of seltzer or club soda. Excuse me. Oh, this, this is nice. Oh, look at this, a happy face. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. I typically cannot tell one gin from another except for Tanqueray. Mm -hmm. You can put a Tanqueray in 10 shots blindfold me and I'll tell you which one it is. Just try it in there for your interview. Oh, sure. Now your next drink's called the Rum Tiki, made with our Stone's Throw Rum. Bottled 94 proof, distilled from molasses. Age this one in a port wine barrel from San Sebastian Winery down the street. So most rum is aged in bourbon barrels. 
Gives a little red tint, a little different flavor profile and sweetness. Mixing it with the tropical tiki mix, coconut cream, pineapple, almond, vanilla, and nutmeg. One part spirit, one part mix, one part seltzer. Usually, when you order a glass of wine, that's about how much they give you. <laughs> Say, don't be chintzy. <laughs> Oh, that's got that coconut in there. It is so smooth and sweet. Mm. Oh, thank now, you, sir. You're welcome. Your next stop's right up the steps in the gift shop. If you look to your left, you'll see the bourbon bar. Now, they're going to have an old-fashioned, made with our Florida straight bourbon. Then, if you'd like to sample any spirit straight, just ask them and they'll pour it for you. So, have a nice afternoon. Thank you, sir. Enjoy. Whiskey drinking friends, they would love this place. Good, how you doing? I'm doing okay. What's the instructions here? <laughs> so I've got your final cocktail. You're on the tour, right? Yes. Perfect. So your final cocktail is a bourbon old-fashioned. We're using our old-fashioned mixer. That's everything you normally model up in an old-fashioned. So sugar, bitters, orange peel. One part mix, four parts of our Florida Street bourbon. So it's a little stronger than the cocktails you had downstairs. Mm. That bourbon, it's 88 proof. It's made from corn, barley, and wheat. It's aged three years. Man, that last one I had, it had coconut milk in it or something. Oh, yeah. So this one's definitely a little different from that, but... What strength is this? So the bourbon's 88 proof, but it's got uh, some dilution to it. We stirred it over ice, added the mix. So oh, okay. So it's not straight. It's not straight, no. <laughs> I can do this. Oh, man, if you got a cough, take this. <laughs> Some better than cough drops. <laughs> Makes you cough, but then it goes away. Mmm. <laughs> Rick approves! My goodness! What's your name? Ian. Ian, thank you. You're oh. very welcome. I'm gonna buy another group and come back to here. <laughs> nice. Best stop on the tour. The trolley car. Hopped off. If you're in St. Augustine, Florida, you've got to stop here. You'll love it. I saw this waterfall feature over here. And I looked at that, that old hand pump on the top of it. My grandparents, Reed, had one of those in their backyard pumping water. Now, by the time I came along, they had city water, but uh, you pull, put some water in the top of it and pump it, and eventually you'd pump water out of the ground. It was nice and cool. Me and my brothers were fascinated by that. And the trolley tour continues. It was so fun. At St. Augustine Distillery. It's been fun, St. Augustine Distillery. It's a lot of fun. Actually, when we get close to the Spanish thing required there to be a central plaza that included a governor's house, an open air market, a Catholic church that went directly to the plaza. They got pretty St. Augustine's plaza has monuments galore. The obelisk to your left is the Spanish Constitution Monument. This is a We're going to pass the Civil Rights of the Soldiers Monument on our left. It's actually a monument for every conflict that citizens of St. Augustine have participated in. You see the colonial era cannon on the plaza. And as we round the front of the plaza, standing on top of that pedestal, is none other than Ponce de Leon. All four foot eleven of them. 
five foot five if you add the platform shoes and the feathers. <laughs> This is the Plaza de la Constitución, established 1565. Well, there's a cannonball here, let's do a little walkthrough. Got a cannon, some cannonballs. I mispronounced that, it's the Plaza de la Construcción. The old, oldest public space in America, the plaza was laid out by the Spanish Royal Ordinances in 1573. Wow, that's a while ago. It's a long time before July 4, 1776, for sure. For what that trolley bus, trolley car rider told us about this obelisk stop and remind myself. The Constitution Monument, Monumento de la Constitucion, 1813. On March 19, 1812, the Spanish Parliament in Cadiz wrote the first Spanish constitution and issued a royal decree for all Spanish town, towns throughout the empire to build monuments and renamed their main plaza, Plaza de la Constitucion, in memoration of the new const constitutional government in Spain. Amazing. And so it was written and so it was done. There's the cathedral. Let's go up here and get a look, an elevated look. The Plaza de la Constitution gazebo. Here are two more cannons. I wonder how many men it took to lift one of these things. It's huge. It's huge. It's massive. Cast iron gun, 32 pound, rifled a part of the armament of the historic Fort Millerian, Castillo de San Marcos. Before, during, and after the Civil War. Look at that. <laughs> I don't have the heart largest hands in the world, but it's big. It's big. Can you imagine? I can. What this thing sounded like when it was blasting off? I mean, like, wow. The sign says St. Augustine Foot Soldiers. Dedicated to those who participated in the Civil Rights Movement of the 1960s in St. Augustine. The discoverer of Florida, Juan Ponce de Leon, landed near here, 1513. Actor bus driver trolley guy said that Ponce de Leon stood a whopping four foot eleven inches. Wow. Hey, somebody shorter than me. Another cannon of some type. Looks like short range high altitude. That's a big old fat thing. So you adjust the height. Look at that. That's huge. Wonder how they move that thing around. Just for a little perspective, you see where the water level is normally. 
That's the Hurricane Matthew high water mark, October 7, 2016.